Look, I'ma say it. This is the best standard Hero Factory set. Core Hunter is iconic and is well loved by so many people. But why? Well, let's discuss why this is one of the best Hero Factory LEGO sets. We'll also highlight how you can use some of the pieces that come in this set when you build your own custom LEGO creations. And let's also take a look at a stellar revamp of Core Hunter that'll just blow you away. Let's go. Core Hunter's design stands out. When you compare it to a lot of the other villains of this wave, he's just something different. He's got a beautiful seamless design and a lot of the bone pieces, they get covered up, which is a bit of an issue with some of the other Hero Factory sets. You know, many of them have those exposed bones or the armor doesn't quite cover it up in the right way. It can look a little unfinished, but that's not the case with Core Hunter. You know, while the design isn't really like groundbreaking or unique, Lego did an excellent job at capturing a presence with this character. And hey, they communicate so much about who this character is just from the name alone. Core Hunter. We know that Hero Factory heroes have cores in their chests. So immediately it evokes imagery of this dude hunting cores. And that's creepy, right? He, you know, he's some kind of serial killer with an obsession for collecting cores from the dead bodies of heroes? Or is he like a trained assassin and the cores that he takes are like his prizes? Well, either way, it's a surprisingly mature concept for a kid's toy. But hey, he's a villain, so it works. And then you combine all of that with his mask, and Core Hunter really starts to stand out. I mean, look at it. It's some kind of like night vision goggles, or it could even be a type of mask that's inspired by like the eyes or the head of a spider, which kind of works with some of those red highlights. They could be spider-like, or maybe it's a mix of both. Whatever it is, it's awesome. And it's also surprisingly militaristic. Yeah, which is something LEGO doesn't really do. And hey, anytime they do actually lean into something that starts to feel a little within that vibe, well, it's a very rare and very special treat. And yeah, it always looks cool. But dude, there's just so much to love about this character. You know, the sinister and sleek black armor. It's menacing, but it's a little stylish as well. Couple that with the wonderful red accents and oh man, you got something very cool. The silhouette of the back shoulder armor, it all just feels so fitting for a villain. The angles of it, they just totally communicate something sinister. They did a good job with this character. Moving to the weapons now, this claw arm, well, it's kind of the perfect weapon for him. It looks ideal for grabbing hero cores and ripping them out of the chests of other heroes. Graphic, but that's kind of the intention, right? Surely. And overall, it just looks cool, especially when you partner it with that lovely blaster. Now, Core Hunter's blaster, it uses this piece up top, which by the way, this same blaster piece appears on all of the heroes that come in the breakout wave but no other villain set from the Breakout Wave uses that piece on top of their blaster. So does that mean Core Hunter stole the blaster from a hero that he killed? Or did he like upgrade himself with Hero Tech? Or did he used to work for Hero Factory as a hero and then he went rogue? Well, look, the Hero Factory wiki says that he was actually formerly a hero, so I imagine that's where that comes from. But still, you get plenty of room to be creative with this character. And you know, it's little details like that. There's so much hidden lore that's just distilled into this character. It's not like they made this dude and then Lego went, uh, I guess we'll write a story about it. I don't know, maybe he used to be a hero. They clearly went in with that information and designed the character around the backstory, which is so cool. And you know, you as a little kid or even a 50 year old adult, whatever, if you're playing with this guy, it's so easy to come up with your own dark and sinister storyline because it's all written on the character. It's awesome. I'll leave a link in the description, by the way, to his wiki page. There's a lot of lore about the character. So be sure to give that a read because it was a good read. So yeah, dude, from the lore to the build itself, Core Hunter just oozes evil. But if we wanted to use the pieces on this set in our own creations, well, how would we do so? Well, let's see what parts come in the set. Starting off, we get two of these knee armor pieces in black. Such a helpful piece. We can see that Patrick Biggs has used them here as shoulder armor on his mock Weebwolf. He's combined this piece with the torso armor piece that actually also appears on Core Hunter, and that's a great idea. The two partnered together like that, it makes for some wonderful robust looking armor. It's a great look. But if you don't like that, you could also use these pieces as a foot design. Patrick also built this mock, it's called Pain and Gain. And how good do they look as a hoove foot design? A great part use and a really great piece. Now, like you'd expect from any Hero Factory set, it comes with plenty of CCBS bone elements, but it specifically includes some of these smaller bone elements. Dylan Meaves has used some of them on his Meltdown revamp. We can see them forming these great mechanical arms, and you know, given the small nature of these pieces and the fact that he's repeated so many, you get a very effective design that has a lot of posability. 
Now that's just some of the smaller bone pieces, but some of the larger ones that we mentioned before, we can see different types of those forming the limbs on this mark. So yeah, they're helpful for all sorts of different stuff, whether it's a little bit more simple or some interesting arms like this. This set also has a lot of these red claw pieces and some red spike elements as well. Alex Mox has used them to represent the female Titan from Attack on Titan. Now these curved claws, using them to mimic the muscles and the ribcage design of the female Titan, what a great idea. Very, very effective and kind of the perfect piece to do exactly that. And dude, honestly, claws and spikes, you're gonna be able to find heaps of different uses for those across many different mocks. But if it's something a little bit more niche like this, it's gonna work perfectly. And yeah, Alex really nailed this mock. Fantastic build, my dude. Up next, Core Hunter also includes three of these hand armor pieces. Here's a couple different mocks that use those parts. Joxon has a mock here called Fruza Returns, and it's used them to create some gorgeous shoulder armor. The smooth texture of those pieces complements the rest of the armor all throughout this creation very, very well. And Joxon has also built another mock that uses one of these pieces, this time that piece is in brown, uh, but of course this mock is called Gaspard the Wear Gator. So the brown version of this piece is forming the forehead of the gator. And you know, it's nice to see how helpful these pieces are for shaping. You know, you can use them for a more complex, wacky looking head design, or something a little bit more modest, but still very brilliant, like this shoulder armor. Such a helpful piece, and such a versatile piece as well. So good that the set comes with three of them, and in black, which is probably the most useful color because it has so many uses across so many different things. And finally, we've got the best piece, Core Hunter's Mask. Now Joxon has built a mock that uses this, it's called Heartstopper, and you know, using it as night vision goggles, it just makes sense. And I mean, honestly, if you just use this as an actual mask on its own, it would probably look just as awesome too. So yeah, honestly, including this mask on Joxon's incredible build here was the perfect addition. It's amazing how much a mask can just complete a build. Oh, and by the way, here's a unique connection on this mask. If you flip it around, you can see the holes on the back here, you know, six of them for the different eyes. Well, you can actually place minifigure hands into these holes, and then you can fill the eyes with a solid color. Whatever the color of the hand is, it'll work. Now, it's not the most stable connection, they do fall out, but it works, and it looks really cool. Plus two, if you build a head design around it, the hands are gonna be locked in place. It's a funky connection. So those are some ideas for how you could use the pieces that are included in this set. But if you wanted to revamp Core Hunter, well, here's a creation built by Sawyer that's called Core Hunter 2.0, and hopefully this will give you some inspiration if you do plan on revamping or reimagining the character. So the set itself looked imposing and sinister. Well, Sawyer somehow made him even more terrifying. I mean, even just something as simple as adding in those black invasion from below head pieces onto the knees here to continue that sleek aesthetic, but just add that hint of spiky evilness to it. Well, that was a perfect addition. Also beefing up the gun arm design and you know, making Core Hunter a little bit taller and making the normal arm look far cooler by giving it more spikes and an interesting kind of curve to it. Man, it's just so impressive. Oh, and look how poseable this build is too. It's really nice to see that all these new armor add-ons and other additions, well, they haven't caused any posability issues, which sometimes they can. Oh, and then also adding in some light bluish gray jets onto the back, that's a great addition. Makes him feel a lot more like a bounty hunter now, you know, ready to fly away with some daring escape thanks to those rocket boosters. Yeah, it's just so impressive how much Sawyer has taken the already awesome toy, but turned it up to 11 and made it so much more impressive. Very well done. I love Core Hunter. I, I can't think of another Hero Factory set that does a better job. I mean, sure, you've got your Titan sets like Witch Doctor that are you know so different and so well built, but Core Hunter accomplishes so much with so little. I think it's the best example of just a standard CCBS set. LEGO did a perfect job of distilling the backstory of the character and putting it into actual physical bricks. And they created a wonderfully sleek and well-crafted design that utilizes Hero Factory pieces in all the right ways. I find myself comparing more Hero Factory sets to Core Hunter these days because he's kind of the gold standard, at least in my opinion. So those are my thoughts on Core Hunter. Hopefully you enjoyed hearing what I had to say and I'd love to hear what you think about the set as well. Thanks for watching guys, happy building and bye for now.